There's one. I got one. I got, I got a big bass. I got a big bass under the dock. That's what we're talking about, folks. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. This is exactly what we're talking about. Dock fishing here in Minnesota. A beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. I'll just tell you what, what I'm doing. I'm going to explain this whole scenario because it's one of my favorite types of things to do. It's dock fishing. And it's so cool. I'll get this guy here landed. And I'll show you what I'm above it to. A beautiful, beautiful, nice, big Minnesota bass. And our today's fishing destination is one of the central lakes in Minnesota. We're in the center part of the state near, near Nevis. Look at that big old three or four pound bass. That's the kind of fish we're targeting today. And I'm going to show you exactly how to catch them under the docks with a Cinco. Hey, so don't go away. That's a good fish. Okay, folks, so let me explain exactly how I caught that last fish. Well, first of all, I have my trusty 297 Green Pumpkin Senko. You know, I've talked about that forever, uh, how, how important. It's a Green Pumpkin uh, and a nice big four-aught hook, 30-pound test braid, a nice big favorite uh, six-and-a-half-foot rod and reel, medium heavy action. Okay, skipping, skipping other dogs. Now, I want to just show you something. This worm, I'm just going to show you right here. Watch how it skips. See how it skips? In other words, when I hit it low to the water with no weight, it'll just... See how it skips? Well, I'm skipping it underneath that dock, just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. And there might be a second one there, but at least there was that one big one. So I'm going to show you how I caught it. Okay, what I did, I backed off here. And I, now, that the cross member that goes under there is only about that far off the water. So it's not an easy cast. That's why you got to skip it. I skipped it perfect. It's up underneath there. I'll put the, put the reel in gear. Now, this is a 30-pound braid. See if another one's under there. Kind of just pull it just a little bit at a time. And as soon as you feel it move, now, that's the other problem. Yeah, I got one. I got one, another one. Another one, another big bass. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. This is what I'm talking about. Big old giant bass. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. This is this is dock fishing 101, son. This is what it's all about. This is this is the deal here. Big old three and four pounders. Look at that size of that guy. That's the kind of fish that we're talking about. Big old huge huge dock fish. Look at that big cinco time. Oh, come on. Be careful, him. That was perfect. Did you notice? That's a look at big old four pound bass. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. You know, it's funny, folks. I'm going to have to get my pliers and get him out of there. Today was kind of a disaster. <laughs> my trolling motor went dead. So I get, I get a look at this. I, the boat's kind of messed up because of my trolling motor, I didn't get a good charge on it last night. And we were in the river and we used the power up. So I have cables running all over the place and I'm charged. That's a kind of excuse us. We're going to catch fish no matter what. But we're having a little bit of a problem with the, with the trolling motor. Big old four pound bass. Woo, son. I'm going to turn it. There's a special way of doing it. You come through the gill like this, be real careful. And you get a hold of the hook and you turn it 180 degrees. See, I just pulled it like that. Zero blood. There's no blood. It's just 100% oh good. But you got to reverse it 180 degrees like I just did. Just a perfect combination. A great big heavy bass. Four, well over four pounds. That's, that, 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 that's just as nice as you can ever get. But we might even catch a bigger one. But that is the key to today's fishing. Well, that worked like clockwork. You're not going to always find them under these docks. And you're going to fish a lot of docks where you won't catch one. I fished that dock, that dock, that dock. This was the first dock I came to that I caught a fish. Caught two in a row. I doubt if there's a third one, but I'm going to show you anyhow that maybe there's a third one. But this checks the line first. There's things about dock fishing that you have to think about. A lot of people say, well, gosh, uh, it's clear water. You're going to need heavy uh, uh, fluorocarbon or something. No, not, that's not exactly the case. I'm using a straight 30-pound braid, and this is a heavy-duty action rod. It's a six and a half. I prefer a six and a half foot rod over a seven foot rod. It gives me a little bit more leverage. I just personally like it better. And this is a brand new reel, and I got a brand new drag on it. And what I'll do, just to kind of, 
make sure it all works is I'm going to take the Senko off and I'm going to make sure it's, a, it's all tight and make sure I have a really good yeah, that's 30 pound braid. Ooh, that's what you need. But look at all the steel under. See, all these docks come out. They're all on wheels and stuff. And so as the ice progresses in about another month or so, they'll pull these docks out. So it's only, those docks are only three or four feet deep. They're not real deep. Okay, now here's a little trick on the Cinco that I want to show you. I kind of messed up the front end. The Cinco's cost about a buck, big deal. Okay, I'll sometimes cut off the tail. A little bit, okay. Cut just that little bit off there, just a little like that. Put it on the floor, don't throw it in the lake. Take the hook and go down tail first. That's kind of a cool deal. Okay, tail first, come around, pull it up, bury the hook like this, and guess what? Mr. Bass doesn't care if it's frontwards or backwards. I guarantee you catch as many strikes with it backwards as you do frontwards. Okay, now skipping again, <coughs> I gotta explain this. I got these life vests laid out because it was all in that compartment where the, we're trying to charge batteries. So you have to kind of excuse the boat a little bit because we're having those battery problems. But now what I do to skip is I'll just show you by, by running it real low to the water. See, it skips. See how it skips? I mean, it skips, it skips on the water if it's low to the water. That went 20 feet. So what you have to do, those crossbars underneath that dock are just that far from the water. You have to have to skip it just underneath there. I think I hit the dog. I think I hit the cross member. That's probably not a good cast. We'll find out. No, no fish on that one. It didn't go far enough up up there. And that's the other problem. It's hard. To, it's hard to skip. That was a good skip. That went all the way up in there. And watch the line. I'm a line watcher. Line the line. Watch the line really close. Now, if you feel any pressure at all, set the hook. I like that that part of the dock that's got the brown. It's just like the biggest shady place. You see, again, they're after shade. So shade is going to be the big part of it. So I'm going to try the shade right here. Oh, wow, that's a bad cast. It wasn't a good cast. It was not a good cast. Threw it too far. Okay, the shade is the deal. Ah, it wasn't a good cast again. I was too far away. Too far away. Not a good cast. Come on, bass. I didn't, the wind got me. Ooh, what the, oh yeah, look at that, look at this. I don't know what I got. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, son, right under the dock. Oh. Big one, big bass, big bass. Look at this guy, look at this guy, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at the, the size of him. He's huge. He's a huge fish. Oh yeah. Look at this guy. Look at what it is. It's a, it's a giant smallmouth. It's a giant smallmouth. It's it's a smallmouth. It's not a largemouth. It's a great big giant smallmouth. That's what we're talking about, folks. Look at this big giant one. Hey, that's the bonus. That's the bonus of a, of a big fish here. A big smallmouth. Look at this guy. Not real big, but big enough. Big enough. Look at this beautiful smallmouth. I'll tell you what, folks. This is some kind of fishing. Big old three and a half pound smallmouth. Just as pretty as can be. I'll tell you, folks, this is, this is dock fishing 100%. Now, there might be another one there. I mean, that was really kind of cool because I. I didn't even make a good cast. I caught it to the edge of it. Big, giant smallmouth. Oh, I'm gonna let him go. Okay, is that the deal? Son, that's the deal. Where's my, where's my Senkos? Oh, I got one. I got one on. 
Oh yeah. Come through there. Come through there. Come come out of there. 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 Oh we did. Come on. I think I think he's out. He's not out. He's not out yet. He's not out yet. He's out of, he's out. He's out. He's out. He got he was all around the that's why you need 30 pound line. He was all out around the stuff. He's a great big one too. He's a great big giant one. Great big giant one. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Great big one. He was way up underneath there. Way up underneath there. That's what we're talking about. Without 30 pound braid, he was all wrapped up in there. Big old four something. Look at that. Four and a half pound man. Look at that. That's the kind of that's the kind of quality fish you have here skipping the docks. I'm telling you what, folks, this is a dream come true. Bass like this, almost not every cast, no, not every dock. Hey, but some of them are good. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get this thing out. I'm gonna get this thing away from this dock here. I don't want to screw, screw it up. I want to get out, get out, drop the troll motor down, drop the uh, power poles down. Okay. Look at that size of that bass. Isn't they, isn't they a gorgeous bass? That's what we're talking about, nearly five pounds. Whoa, son. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. But did you see how I had to wrestle him out of there? He was all wrapped up in there. He was on around all those steel cables. If I'd had anything less than 30 pound braid, I would have not caught that big fish. That was a giant fish. And it was strictly, strictly because I had heavy enough tackle. See, I'm a power fisherman. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's what I do with heavy tackle. I mean, sure, I, I, I can finesse stuff, but you don't, you don't finesse some of these docks. This is not a finesse deal. This is a powerhouse deal here. So I'm going to try it again. A jig giant fish like that. Let's see if I can get another one. Okay, I skipped it kind of right to the edge. That ought to be one right there. They really get under those docks. Under those floating things. Oh, there's one. Yeah, oh yeah, I got one, I got one. Yes, sir. Good one. That's a good one, that's a good one, that's a big one. That's a big one. That's a, maybe a big small mouth. Maybe a big small mouth. Maybe a good one. Oh, look at that one. Big, nice, large mouth. Big, large mouth, big one. Woo! Well, we've caught fish every kind of way today, folks. I'm telling you what, another giant fish off a, off a floating dock. Big old four pounder or so, maybe five. That's just as nice as can be. I'm telling you what, folks, if you want to have some quality fishing, I'm talking about big time quality bass like this one. Hey, try your dock fishing. Try the Cinco. Try the Cinco on a spinner rod with braid. You'll catch beautiful trophy bass like this one. And we've done it many times today. We've ca caught a lot of beautiful bass. We've lost a few bass. We've had a terrific day on the Cinco on the docks. Hey, so thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.